Welcome back. This is State of the Nation, where we take a look at the State of the Nation, what is affecting the country as of this week. Before we can dive into that, for those who are just joining us, this is my panel this morning. Sit closer to me, I have Advocate of the High Court, Ambrose Vera, at the center, Liz Kisianga. She's Executive Director of My Leader Kenya. And on my far left, I have Honorable Mtula Kilonzo, Jr., Senator for Makweni, plus is also a lawyer. Before we can dive into that, let me set the basis of the conversation. We will begin with that dissolvement of Nairobi, where Kiricho Senator Aaron Chiriot is proposing the dissolution of Nairobi County and its management reverted to the national government, owing to its cosmopolitan nature. Chariot argues that Nairobi has unique challenges and plays a key role as an administrative center and the country's economic hub. Now, the senator's openness said that the city requires different planning as compared to other counties. And through a constitutional amendment, Chariot wants the president to appoint a cabinet secretary to be in charge of Nairobi capital city. But Aaron Chariot is not the first to front such a bill. Back in 2016, then Muranga senator... Kembe Gitura proposed the scrapping of Nairobi County and the leadership of the country's capital reverted to the national government. The proposal was fiercely opposed. Liz. Let me begin with you. Perhaps your thoughts on this specific scenario where should we scrap out Nairobi and make it a metropolitan? Yes and no. Yes, in that uh, I look at it that uh, Nairobi should be under the national administration and budget. Mm -hmm. But if you also go through that route, eh, it means that uh, most of the positions that are also like a uh, job creations will also most probably go down and also some people will lose the positions but in regards to its economic status uh, it's a strength in terms of the whole country's economic uh, progress then it should also be under the national assembly uh, the national governor all right and this is a, co a question that we've also asked our viewers you in case you're watching from at home what your thoughts are tweet us at ktn news at zinzi underscore okay use the hashtag money express ktn that's your ticket into the conversation whether <laughs> let me hear your thoughts on this specific <laughs> scenario and this is if it's shut down it will be the second time honorable can be tried it it wasn't well accepted your thoughts I think that's a sick joke. <laughs> I think we're now, because of, I saw in the newspaper that because of the handshake, parliament is boring. So it appears that senators and MPs, they have nothing useful to discuss. So they come up with weird suggestions. The president is already saying, my cabinet secretaries have let me down. So which one will be running Nairobi efficiently? Let us look at before the 2010. Nairobi was under the national government. Was it much better? When you want to attack elections just because people vote and they vote for people you think are the wrong people, do you change the election or you change the people? Mm -hmm. I continue repeating, until we will stop electing people on the basis of tribe, party, and man, we do not expect better things. We must just elect them on the basis of their tribes and then, or their parties, and then we endure for five years. Nairobi's problems are management problems. It is not resource problem. You don't need resources. You understand? Not to drive on the pavement. You don't need resources to know that here there are hawkers, here there are no hawkers. You don't need resources just to uh, remove dirt from Kekomba. But when you see the president and the governor descend to where now they are doing these things physically, then you know that the devil is real. Because they're supposed to put up structures and management. When you come to my house and you see me now, you are my visitor, and I'm struggling with washing the spoons and the plates, then you know there's a problem of management in that house. Because good management requires when you visit me, I am there, everything is working, food is coming. So when you see, I saw my president that I love and respect and voted for repeatedly, going to Kekombo with Governor Sunko to remove the dirt and to jump around and say, this drama <coughs> is not managed. So Nairobi's problem is management. We must sit down and say, how are we going to manage it? With the structure of election, the governor, the
the people, and then we put in resources and the follow laws and regulations. When the governor tells you, I will make Uhuru Park a parking lot, I will bring all our cars in the whole town, surely, and then you say, we love you so much for saying this, we elect you. Then thereafter, you say, you want to clean Nairobi. You are the one who is sick. Right. It's the voter right. who is sick. Not the leader. Let me rope in, Honorable Kilonzo, your thoughts on this specific scenario, especially now, a lot of the conversation, especially with the debate, is boundaries again. Uh, let me disclose that uh, the, the Senator Aaron Chiriota appeared before Legal Affairs Committee yesterday uh, in what we call a pre-publication scrutiny. And we raised our concerns about this bill in terms of its timing and in terms of the politics and what, uh, what it intends to achieve at the end of the day. So it, our objections are on record that uh, we think that the, there's a problem that should be addressed. But let me start from the beginning is that Aaron Chirio, just like any um, um, member, uh, um, member of the parliament, has a right to propose any legislative amendment. So it's not wishful thinking. Uh, however, his, his thoughts are driven by uh, major cities in the world that are managed by the national government, uh, New Delhi being one of them, ATC, Canberra in Australia, and many others, Punjab, they are managed by national government. The legal structure has failed. The national government has failed. And the Urban Areas and Cities Act, particularly Section 6, says Nairobi is the capital city of Kenya, is the seat of national government, the seat of di diplomats, etc., etc. And national government and the county government will enter into an agreement. Which agreement will segment the sort of services that national government can offer in order to boost uh, uh, the, the services in the city? There is no place in the world. There is no president in the world. There is no same government anywhere in this world that would allow a capital city where every president, every prime minister, every wife of a president, like Trump's wife, lands a city as bad as Nairobi. In a, if you go to the major cities in the world, they even take care of lampposts. The lampposts are done in such a way that people just want to take pictures on a lamppost. That is what you do to manage a city. All major cities in the world have rivers, for example clean rivers, whether it's Geneva, whether it's Beijing, it doesn't matter. But they, they make sure that the city is managed in such a way that people just come to the city for the sake of it. There are places like Venice where they are thinking that they should manage the number of people who come. They want to do a program. You are too many of you. People should come to the city driving open buses. What, would you do that in Nairobi? No. No. And Why? remember, we still don't have a deputy governor till we, now. We still don't have a deputy so governor. So if it's mismanagement that is an issue. You cannot tell Governor Sonko to manage the largest city in the country with the largest population, with the highest number of cars, with the largest infrastructure alone. It's not possible. 60% of the GDP is here. All the businesses are, are in the city of Nairobi. We must have a national conversation. And I told Senator Chariot, who is a member of Jubilee, we must sit down and start thinking the roads in this city must be managed from the national government. Why should, for example, Kisumu, Kisumu County is so clean, Kisumu City is so clean, it's unbelievable. The infrastructure is so good. Why should we have roads out in outlying areas and the residents of Nairobi who are contributing the GDP sleep in, in a place where it is dusty, there is no security. Uh, if you go to downtown Moy Avenue, it's like you're in a place, in uh, some place in the jungle. Why? We have NYS so who are doing to, nothing. Who is to blame when it comes to mismanagement? We are all to blame. We are all, we are all to blame. We blame uh, Governor Sonko. We give him shareable revenue. Uh, it's not enough. We blame him. The national government used to pay, for example, property rates. What are the, f the sources of funds for a county government like Nairobi? It's property rates. Property rates used to be, be paid before local government transi transited to become county governments. The national government has not pro paid property rates for the city of Nairobi where they own buildings since 2013. Right. And therefore created such a gap and a hole. Nairobi County has a debt. In fact, Nairobi County is insolvent. Nairobi County has a debt of up to 59 billion shillings. Uh, Ambrose Weather is right. 
Up to 2013, the seat of government was in Nairobi. It was managed by, Nair by the national government. Was it much better? No. So we must sit and understand. That is why when, uh, I'm sorry to say this, but I must say it, when my father was a minister for Nairobi Metropolitan, there was a metropolitan plan. There was a dream about uh, regenerating the city. It's not enough to demolish buildings around the city that are in, on the riparian land. It's not enough to suggest we should move our rivers. We must think seriously that we need to make sure that if the outlying areas, Machakos, Kiambu, Nakuru, are going to grow, we must make sure that Nairobi is functioning as a city, as a city in the world where people land here and, you know, you look like... They marvel at it. You marvel at it. You just stand on a tree somewhere and take a picture. There, if you go to the city of Nairobi, people travel, for example, to, to, to Washington to take pictures in the Washington Memorial, right. Lincoln Memorial, and many others. It's a beautiful city when you go there. If you go to Tokyo, you, you won't believe. There are many memorial centers in the city of Nairobi. For example, New Stanley Hotel is a site that Kenyans should go, just go and marvel about because it's something that was there in, uh, those, in the olden days. And it's, like not that, and it's not that our leaders do not know this. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it, but when it comes to enforcing it, because they travel to those cities, they see it, they yes. see the glamour that's like, don't they not want to bring it back to here in Nairobi? That's, so it's not that they do not know. That's that. why, that's why I, I told Senator Chariot, is, is when your house is burning, you don't take off. <laughs> you, you don't run away from your house when it starts burning. You, start deal, you deal with the fire. Mm -hmm. The Wait problem up. is not dissolving the county. The problem is not giving the work to a cabinet sector who the, uh, the, national, uh, the president is complaining about because it's not going to be any better. Right. So the, the solution is dealing with the actual problem. What are our collections? Where is the money going? What are we doing with it? Who is, who is dealing with security? Who is dealing with our water? Our city he doesn't have water. Right, but I have yeah. a last say on this one. What I'm saying, you know, uh, the creator of everything said something like this. He said he did not allow rain to fall on the ground so for things to grow because there was no man to manage. So it is after the creation of man to do the work of management. We used to have his father, mm. they also had the late Pichuki, mm. and Nairobi River in the city was very clean. Yeah. It is not that we borrowed loans from China to clean it or mm. money from IMF. They were just basic decisions. Today you find that the, the, the National Highways Authority, they put embankments, uh, those, those things along uh, the, the highway into the city. Honorable uh, Songo and his team, they cut and cut it. And remove them. Now, you don't need money, a loan from China to agree and say, we're going to put this is good for us. Management does not require dissolve this, dissolve that power here, power. Here. It's a matter of saying we are going to move this way. We are going to cleaning the highways is your work. Yeah. Doing this is my work. How much do we need? How much comes from me? How much comes from you? Mm. And then we move. If you look at say, counties like McQueen, where I run by my teacher, yes, it is moving. If you go to some counties also receiving the same money, they don't know the head or the tail. They, when they are buying a wheelbarrow, they hug all over it for years. <laughs> it is the sickness of the mind. It is not about money or who is cabinet secretary, who is this. Our leaders should lead. Our people should try to get good leaders. What is very interesting, if you look at the leaders who are performing, you understand? The leaders were performing around, take governors, take uh, Governor Kebwana, Governor Mutua, Governor um, uh, Ngilo. They are not elected on the basis of party, or, or on the basis of gender, or on the basis of what people look and say, we think you can do a good job. They are not electing him on the basis that his father was a minister. They say, we think this young man is doing a good job. Right. Now, some places we go blindly and close our eyes and say, if so and so says, we elect, then we sit back and say we expect that. That is wrong. All right, let me just drop into the other conversation, as I promised, the <coughs> referendum issue. Now, a constitutional bill to change the general election from August to December was tabled in Parliament yesterday, but it wasn't being able to pass because it did not meet the threshold of 233. Rather, 188 were present. Now, this is the case, Liz, and I want to bring you in, given that my leader
Liberia, Kenya, is a lot about public participation. With this specific <coughs> referendum issue, do you feel as if Kenyans are well aware of what's happening? Kibiku, uh, thanks for this. One, uh, we have not yet, or rather the public is not yet sure of the exact uh, amendments or in about the exact uh, points that the referendum is focusing on. Just, if we could say just a few, but not the number that should be in a position to respond. How did we get to this? We've carried research in most parts of the country through our agents, mm -hmm. and most people basically know about just uh, scrappy some of the counties, some of the constituencies, but they also don't understand how this is going to be run. And it's up to the government to take the initiative and just as the Constitution indicates, clearly let Mona Inchi understand what this is all about. Before we start rolling it out, let Mona Inchi, let the government take its responsibility and let Mona Inchi know this referendum is about one, two, three, four. It's going to benefit Mona Inchi in this way and not necessarily the politicians who always come on board the time they feel it's time to change the referendum to my, to my benefit. So you don't feel as if Kenyans are being involved? They are involved, but not to the extent that we expect as public participation uh, being much uh, pushed or given much limelight in the Constitution. All right, take a look at the story that our reporter filed in regards to this. cannot vote, proceed to vote on the motion and therefore for second reading and therefore the motion is defeated. For you to survive with a constitutional amendment, you must speak to the majority and the minority leadership. I mean, we are not here by default. I have no interest, by the way, of saying, Mr. Speaker, that uh, we must revisit this. I mean, next time another person will come. The standing ahead, Liz. Yeah, just look at that. Eh? Uh, this was a motion on uh, pushing the, election the elections to December. And that's why I've talked about selfish interests among our leaders. Our, let me talk of MNS, members of National Assembly. One, if there's talk of December, elections move it to December just because it's an holiday and uh, I don't know students or kids papers are at home. One, what's the difference between, because mostly these elections, if uh, we look at the back days, they were carried on 27th and, stu and schools used to open around 5th. In case of a rerun, still they will run into there into the other section of. So for you, you think we should stick to August? August is good, why? One, because uh, if you look at campaign period, it takes through the whole year. The campaign mood runs through the whole year. And we don't want, I personally as a Manainchi, I don't feel like it's good now we start to move another year in case of the uh, cases the election cases, we don't need to start moving to another year and start escalating the same thing. If we choose it's 2022, let us continue with August. And I think the team that came up with August had a very good background in terms of research, in terms of settling down to the date they settled in August. But do you think we should have it in December or we stick to August? Given the fact that the school calendar can be affected, investors will hold close to their money given that we are starting a new year on a political scale as well. I think uh, the reasoning that went into August, uh, a lot of things were looked into, including uh, during holidays, rerun, and then public holidays and the enjoyment of Christmas and then preparing for the new year. In the new year in December, that's when people prepare their, their new year resolutions, their whatever, whatever. So I look at it and I say, August would be better. But my worry is now we are here after election. And the key thing is 
priorities. Priorities. If you look at creation, the creator of the universe said, day one, he did this. Day two, he did this. Day three, day four. Now, if we are out of elections one year, and the leaders in parliament and senate, instead of discussing bread and butter, growing the economy, improving education, doing this, taxation, they're already discussing, let us uh, uh, change this date for election, let us amend this constitution, let us increase these seats, let us reduce this seat. When are we going to grow the economy? The highest motivation of human beings is self-preservation. And self-preservation requires you have water, the food, shelter, clothing, whatever. We are talking about economy. Before you even talk about government. So this leader, when are they going to discuss real things? My brother, Senate, mm. when you talk to your colleagues, when are we going to discuss, discuss <laughs> bread and butter, oh, yeah. enlarging the economy, <clears throat> reducing the debt, improving services, cleaning Nairobi, secure? When are we going to discuss it? Election, election, election. Were we born and bred for elections in Kenya? <laughs> Please. Yeah. So, Senator Kilonzo, on the same tune that Weda has, yes. the fact that we don't have a specific agenda or a specific question with the question of referendum, yeah. different individuals, different parties want different things. First of all, do you think um, senatorial position should be removed? <laughs> <laughs> the way you're asking the question and blinking, <laughs> it looks like the question is loaded. Let me begin by saying that I still think, uh, just like the good lady, that we have started the referendum issue from the wrong point. It means that we have politicized it without a real agenda and without a real issue on and the And there's table. no question. There's if we no were to go on referendum tomorrow, we do not know exactly what we are voting. Uh, no, there's no referendum question. Everybody has got their own money thing that they have in their mind about what they think should be amended. Uh, Senator Chariot thinks you should reduce counties. Uh, Moshmo Raila Odinga has got his own view. Others have got, come get has got their own view. So how do we go about this? I've said that we have failed in the system because out there in the public platforms, people are saying, oh, we're not going to give you seats. You don't even know what seats they're talking about. The point is, the Building Bridges Initiative meet, uh, Committee has taken too long to, to, uh, to, uh, to consummate the handshake, if I may use that word. <laughs> So, I, 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 yes, they, I, they, they should have by now, and they begin on October 23rd, try to consolidate the thoughts. When we actually get to a referendum, if we ever do, and maybe we should, there shouldn't be five questions on the table. There should be two questions or one question. And, mm -hmm. The question of debt is software issues. So that's not a big issue. It's, it's a small little issue. We should pack it somewhere in a corner and do with it at a later date. Speaking of positions, women rep senatorial position, do you think they should be scrapped? No, you cannot. No, we negotiated the question of, uh, and in this one I must declare my interest because I, I'm a special rapporteur for the IPU parliament on parity question. In Rwanda, they are at 64% on gender representation. Ethiopia as well, recently, as yes, yesterday. Uh, yes. In, 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 in the Nordic countries, they are over 50%. There is never a question on gender parity. We are still not, at, we are still dealing with the floor, not even a ceiling. 30% is the floor. We have not even gotten to the ceiling. We are at 19% of okay, so representation. That's... So the, the women reps was a, 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 a solution, part solution of dealing with the, question, uh, the issue that there must be a, a third gender in the question of representation. So it's possible, the, uh, and, and they've used this famous phrase, you call a dog a bad name and then kill it. So women reps are the problem. The reason why you don't have food on your table is because you have women reps. It, it, it cannot work like that. We must deal with the real question. The question of expense, the executive has 12%. Parliament has 2% of the total budget. So that really is not a question of money. It's a question that the people who want to expand the executive want to expand from 12% to 15% and then reduce 2%. The Senate, all over the world, where you have a devolved structure, you have an upper chamber. So you don't think Senator the opposition should be scrapped? No, no, let me, just, let me explain so that then I can answer your question directly. At the independence, the only way we dealt with Majimbo was to say, why do we need an upper chamber? We scrapped the chamber, moved to central government. The, the way the National Assembly uh, as, 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 as uh, conducted itself in the, in the last few days right. begs the question as to whether they can be the true defenders of devolution given the opportunity. Because they deducted money going to counties by 9.8 billion shillings. 
and negotiated with national government to let the uh, Constituency Development Fund remain intact as it is. So, please, Kenyans, this question I pose to you. Who is, will be the ultimate protector of the devolution and roads and services you are seeing in Makueni, Wajia? Will it be National Assembly or Senate? Uh, you, okay, you can take away the job from me, but the services that you are receiving there, you must have an upper chamber that can, strictly speaking, deal with devolved units. All right. All right. Okay. So then let's tie in the electoral body. Now, the Independence Electoral and Boundaries Commission maintains that it's intact despite resignation of four commissioners and recent dismissal of CEO Ezra Chiloba. But why is Parliament and the President silent on fixing the electoral agency? Where are you going to con How are you going to conduct your work when you do not have quorum? And recent ruling of the High Court, which pronounced itself very, very clearly that quorum is a moving number, it's never static. And the Constitution says constitutional commissions should have minimum of three, maximum of nine. I think as we are here, we are not two and a half. So those are just some of the thoughts of our leaders. So keep that in mind. We want to take a quick commercial break, digest all of this, and then we'll pick up the conversation from there. KTN News. Inheriting schooling. Building, investing, saving, or maybe retiring. Achieve your dreams with the KCB Gold Savings Account. Set the amount you want to save and how long you want to save for. Deposit as often as you like at no extra cost. Or even set up freestanding orders. Enjoy Kenya's highest earning interest rate by visiting any KCB branch today and opening a KCB Gold Savings Account. KCB Bank. Go ahead. Radio is the main platform that has coverage of over 90% of the Kenyan audience. Of this 90%, 5 million voted for Radio Maisha as the people's choice in as far as radio is concerned. Radio Maisha is the overall winner of the 2018 Kusa Award radio category with the finest Swahili presenters. Here is where journalism meets entertainment. Radio Zaidio Radio, nothing but the best of entertainment, information and educational content. Be sure to tune in every day for the best of radio right across the year to advertise on Radio Maisha. Call 0719-012-522. Radio Maisha to Kumbele Pamoya. The premier Pan-African show. Bringing you continental news round the clock. Intriguing discussions about our motherland. China, with a population of almost uh, 2 billion, they, they, they need virtually everything. We need more youth in politics and we need more youth involved in governance. There is still a big humanitarian crisis. And about culture, we sample the best of African culture. Catch Bottom Line Africa every weekday from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m.
We are at the tail end of the conversation here of State of the Nation, and we want to wrap it up with that conversation of IABC. Um, Honorable Kilonzo, let me begin with you and pick it up from where we were when we went on a break. The fact that um, the president, should he, not, and including Raila Odinga himself, should, are they not, should they not be more concerned with the IABC currently? They seem to be quite quiet about what's happening, especially given the wrangles that we've been seeing within the electoral body. As of last week, Chiloba was fired. Nothing has also come out from both leaders. In fact, that's the reason I raised it during a continuous voter registration in Makwene. Because I'm not certain why politicians are speaking about the referendum, yet we have an elephant in the room. I, I want to say, even if the High Court has made a ruling, which I disagree entirely, that quorum for the IABC 7. I sat in the special select committee that came up with the numbers. And, and quorum it cannot be a moving number. Quorum is majority of people in the meeting. Now, if, if uh, commissioners are supposed to be seven, how can you say three is quorum? It cannot be quorum. Let me tell you what happened in the uh, last election. Jubilee came up with the electoral laws amendment bill two weeks to the election, which for the first time became law by default because the president did not sign. The, these laws were challenged. What was the intention? There were three, three, issues, two, three major issues. One, reduce the qualification of a chair because they wanted the vice chair to become chair. The court rejected. Reduce quorum from five to three. The court rejected. When I hear a commissioner who has taken oath speaking about quorum is a moving number and the minimum in the constitution is three, maximum is nine, then I, I then begin to understand that we have a person who doesn't even know where, where he's going. He's lost. Because the constitution also requires that for purposes of the IEBC, you set up a law that would then put in place uh, the IEBC. The IEBC Act speaks of five, not three. And therefore, as we speak today, we have no functional commission. No functional commission. And it's, we, what we are talking about, either the referendum or what is called boundaries view coming up in 2019, I'm afraid it will not happen. So, and what surprises me is that everybody is quiet. Four co three commissioners, other than Rosalind Akombe, resigned. One said he, she resigned by immediately effect. I don't know what she meant. But she has resigned. The court says the resignation didn't go to the president. And then Chebukati says they can't go to office. So, Senator Kilonzo, then on that same tune, don't you not think Parliament should be more concerned with the IABC right now or whether we should, rather than whether we it, should even be going for a referendum? It should, it should have been a priority. But have it's been, not. It's, that is, I'm, what did he say about uh, my, my good friend and senior weather? Mm -hmm. That we're dealing with the wrong issues when we come to election date. We're dealing with the wrong issues. We're talking about the wrong things. So is it the pure first, greed or arrogance? It's called deceit. <laughs> it's called deceit, uh, where, 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 where the snake de, uh, de, uh, cheated <laughs> Eve in the Garden of Eden. It's called deceit. We are lying to Kenyans. We must fix IEBC. In the nomination, when we set up this law, where we put uh, church leaders, uh, an number of whether is, I think, a deacon now, are you? <laughs> we set up a criteria that was only going to last for this commission. Right. So if we are going to replace the four commissioners who left office, we must set up another criteria. We are not talking about this issue. It is wrong. It is deceitful. We are lying to Kenyans. So Liz, do you yes. think that we have even the money itself, the cost of a referendum to go, th to go through it? Now, uh, even before we go to the money, who will be carrying this out? Mm. It should be IABC. And IABC, the moment the commissioners resigned, within that one week, uh, constitution, constitution, constitutionally and according to the law, the president should have gazetted and what else? They should then have uh, gazetted the positions as, uh, as vacant and then gotten or appointed commissioners mm -hmm. that has gone through the process to get the right people in place. So that from there now we could be talking about the referendum because referendum has to be carried out by the same IBC mm -hmm. and it's in a mess. Mm -hmm. The other day, uh, Chiloba was, uh, I understand, was... He was fired. Uh, fired, because I don't know how, because the commissioners are three. In terms of quorum, there's an issue. Mm -hmm. And you find there are some serious, complicated <coughs> matters that need to be handled as soon as possible if we are to say, like, as Kenyans, we are moving somewhere in regards to what is... Issues. Why do you think President Uru Kenyatta and his counterpart Raila Odinga are so quiet on the electoral body? 
I have always said this, and I repeat, that the IEBC is a good thing for candidates. <laughs> it depends with a prepared IBC is a dangerous IBC. It cannot be manipulated. So you wait until they don't have time. You give them a year to election, some commissioners don't even know where the toilets are and where the McQueen is and where Kisumu is. Then you tell them, conduct the election. Mm -hmm. Then you can gerrymander with elections the way you want. So you don't expect President Uhuru to be worried about it. I think it is only those who are going to be candidates like Honorable Kalonso, Honorable Ruto, Honorable Raila. They're the ones who should be, who is going to manipulate this. So looking at it, I don't think it is one of the president's priorities. And then Chebukati also is having a good salary. So he has to gerrymander, bring in some quasi explanations as a lawyer yeah. to continue surviving. Because a lawyer will always get you something you want to hear. If you look at it today, we don't have an IBC. No. We don't have, we don't have it. And uh, secondly, the currency through which they trade is called credibility. Nothing else, credibility, the Combatants just want to say, do we trust them? Do we trust you? Now, when you have uh, the CEO is gone, there are three co commissioners. The others who are saying they resigned, they didn't resign. They are in, they are out. The chairman saying, I'm uh, registering. You can see even the registration of voters. People are saying, what are you doing? Yeah. We don't trust you in the first place. Please don't. So if we are going to have a stable Kenya, and the president is hearing this, we need to fix the IBC now. Then set it in place, they have about two to three years to organize everything so that when we go for elections, competence are over, court cases are finished, everybody is a good umpire. Otherwise, now we will be asking who stands to benefit from a disorganized IBC. Right. It must be a candidate who is incumbent. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to close off State of the Nation and one point for everyone in the spec that we need to talk about what um, Weda had earlier mentioned, the fact that the boss himself, Mr. President Ruhr Kenyatta, earlier this week on Tuesday, my memory serves me right, at Strathmore said that his cabinet secretaries are not working. When you have an employer, when you have your boss saying that his employees, because cabinet secretaries, we don't vote for them, they're handpicked by the president himself, are not on the ground doing the work. If the president himself is quote to quote frustrated, where does that leave? the common Kenyan when cabinet secretaries within certain dockets are not doing what it is that they should be doing. Where I'll begin with you as I go down. I think uh, the president uh, was uh, being populist, trying to throw the problem to us of people he hired. People, and most of them are from home, either from uh, Mashimu Aruto's home or his home. So I think he has a dilemma in firing them. So he's saying, now what do I do with these guys and so on. But President, we only have three years for you to deliver on the four agenda, give us a good legacy. Those of us who supported you want to go back home and say, we gave you the man and you have seen. Please get to work. If somebody's not working, fire them, hire people, ask Senator Abdullah Kiloso to resign from his Senate, make him cabinet secretary, let him work. That, that's the work we want. Please don't go somewhere and then complain and cry and dance and then we are going hungry. That is not why some of us braved bullets and, and, and stones to vote for you. We want to see work. Liz? Uh, just to echo what uh, Senior Wendo had said, uh, President needs to step down as then to put his feet down and know that it's his legacy. And Kenyans are watching. Sugarcoating about uh, uh, CSs were not working, that's out of order. And it's good also for Kenyans to, after this information, my leader Kenya, my leader.co.k provides this information from the president to the MCS on what each and every of them is doing in terms of development. Let them visit and let them put their leaders into work because they are in a position to put their concerns and air their views, and this information reaches the leaders right away. All right, Senator? Yeah. You know, I was very surprised, actually, the, at the ASK show. That the, when he said that comment? When he was wagging his finger at a cabinet secretary uh, in public, warning him. I mean, uh, Kenya will never have a president like Uhuru. He's so tolerant, so patient. I mean, in a normal case, if that was normal employment, that gentleman called Mwangi Kiyunjiri will be home. 
uh, when he refused to read his speech and says, it's you have let me down, I'm embarrassed by you, it's, that is, it means go home. There are people who are willing to work. And therefore, sometimes I, I, I don't like that Tolerant. demeanor of the president, where he appears as if these people are letting him down and he can only complain in public, as opposed to doing the right thing. Fire that gentleman, replace him, and deal with the consequences that his tribe is going to complain, or something, or his friends. For example, when I, I had him say, people are calling me, why are you calling me? Uh, don't call me. I'm going to deal with this issue. I've lost friends. So that sort of thing. But he wants to keep his friends. He wants to keep everybody happy. And at the same time, he has to be the one to absorb the pressure and the complaints by the public and apologize on behalf of his employees. It cannot work. He needs to change that. He must change that. He needs, uh, and by the way, he, he doesn't need an election again. We have provided that when he leaves office, he's going to have all the luxury he needs. He doesn't need these people. Fire them. This question about the two billion NCPB. Mm -hmm. Why should it come to the public? Mm -hmm. Why should we go to, to elderly senators? We were given a tongue lashing. A tongue lashing by the public who elected Jubilee. The president should not apologize on behalf of a cabinet secretary who is not elected by anybody. But his tolerance is costing Kenyans and of so his own legacy. Image. Right. Is, is, is big four is going to become a big four embarrassment at this rate. <laughs> it is what it is. Thank yeah. you so much, Honorable Kilonzo, Honorable Mutula Kilonzo Jr. He is the senator for Makwini County, plus he's also a lawyer. Liz Kisiani.